I'm so excited that you are joining us today and I hope this message will be a blessing to you. I encourage you to open your hearts and receive what God has in store for you. For more information, visit our website. Now sit back, relax and prepare yourself to receive from God's Word. Thank you, Pastor Steve, once again. Um, so there was a family that was on vacation in Israel. While they were on this vacation in Israel, the mother-in-law suddenly died. I mean, had a heart attack, died on the spot. So they went to this uh, person who is organizing the funeral. What do you call them? Um, fu funeral director, yeah. They went and talked to the funeral director. And the funeral director said, now if you want to take the body back to America, it's $25,000. But if you want to bury in Israel, it's only $5,000. So the husband thought for a moment and said, I want to take the body to America. So the guy who was handling this uh, stuff, he said, boy, you surely must be loving your mother-in-law a lot. He said, no, I don't love her so much, but I heard of a story that there was a man that was buried in Israel. And on the third day, <laughs> he rose again. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't have anything against mother-in-laws. <laughs> Uh, it is just a joke. Uh, and I'm sure glad that you got it with all my accent. Uh, we normally talk on the phone to Pastor Steve. And just before this trip, I was talking to Pastor Steve. And uh, she was, he was like, what is that? What is that again? But I knew that he didn't get anything that I said. <laughs> but I knew he got one thing. I am coming and it's okay. <laughs> so I thought the rest of the conversation we will carry out when we get here. So I'm going to try to talk slowly as possible, and uh, I hope you get it, okay? Uh, this morning, I want to read from the Gospel of John, chapter 16, verses 7, and I believe the mission this morning is to talk about the helper. The helper. Everybody say the helper. Okay? How many of you had people who would come and babysit who would cook for you and do stuff for you. In Sri Lanka, you know, we would have people who would be maids who will come and cook for you and clean the house for you. How many of you are familiar with that? And you would tell something to them and they would do it. Yeah. Is that right? And we would call in Sri Lanka that they are helpers. But this morning, I want to talk to you that you got a supernatural helper that is able to do far much exceedingly abundantly than you could think or imagine. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> and is that good? Yeah. <laughs> right? There are people who, I mean, and, and all of us need help. Yeah. We need help in our marriages. We need help with our kids. We need help in our education. We need help in our jobs. We need help in our houses. There are, we need spiritual help. There is, there is so much of things that we need help for. And this morning, I want to talk to you about the helper that Jesus gave to us. Gospel of John, chapter 16, verses 7. If you are there, say amen. amen. But I tell you the truth, it is for your good. It is for your good that I go away. Because if I do not go away, the helper, the comforter, the counselor will not come to you. But if I go away, I will send him to you. That word there, comforter, helper, paraclete, parakletos, means the one who can come and help you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your spirit that is here right now. I pray for a person who's got a problem with their bladder, and I pray healing in Jesus' mighty name.
I pray for a person that has got a, a problem with their disc at, on the back, and I pray healing right now in Jesus' name. We thank you that you are the helper and that you are here. We pray that you will open our eyes, open our ears, open our hearts, so that we will receive your bread of life. This is your bread of life. Now we pray you will break it and feed each one where they are in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Paraclete, helper. The word is being used in the New Testament over 24 times. So there is something special about the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I am going, but I am going to give you a helper. How many of you have had somebody told to come, you, they told you to come home, and when you got there to get some help or something, they are not there, and you call them, where are you? Oh, I am gone, but I got everything sorted out for you. Somebody's going to sort things out for you. You know what Jesus said? I'm going to be gone, but guess what? I'm going to leave somebody with you that is going to take care of everything that you need. Hallelujah. Isn't that good? Yes. And it says that there are over 50 things that this Holy Spirit can do for you. Wow. Over 50 things. When you look through the Bible, there is over 50 things that God, this Holy Spirit, can do to you to help you. But this morning, I want to talk to you about three things. Three things. First thing is the Holy Spirit, the helper, can lead you. Everybody say lead. lead. Okay. Uh, Romans 8, 14 says, For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. A few years ago, two and a half years ago, um, before, just before Rema was born, and uh, she got the labor pains, uh, not the labor pains, the uh, water, water bag broke, and we are in the hospital, and uh, as we are in the hospital, suddenly, uh, Rema's heartbeat begins to stop. And we didn't know what to do at that time. And at that time, immediately, when we consulted the doctor, the doctor said, oh, these kind of things happen. It's going to be okay. In two hours, the baby will be delivered. But immediately, the Holy Spirit spoke to, my, spoke to me and said, go for a C-section now. Go for a C-section now. So I told the doctor, we got to do a C-section right now. He said, no, two hours. Baby will be delivered. I mean, in Sri Lanka, they do. This is. <laughs> in two hours, baby will be delivered. <laughs> but I said, no. <laughs> no, right now, C-section. Because the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, right now. And guess what? In 30 minutes, we were in that operating theater. And while in that operating theater, the doctor made the cut, tried to take the baby out, couldn't take the baby out. Because the baby was stuck in the birth canal. He had to get his assistant, and both had to put their hands in and actually literally take the baby out. Like... Shake and I, the table is shaking, and I'm and Kayla is asking what's happening, and I I'm like something is happening, I don't know, but but and they were shaking, and and she was under anesthesia or whatever you call it, and and she didn't feel it, but I, she sure knew that something was shaking, and suddenly they took the baby out, and guess what? For three and a half minutes, no pulse, no heartbeat, three and a half minutes. And bang, she came to life. The next day morning, the doctor tells me, you made a great call. I thought it was his job to make the call. <laughs> but the Holy Spirit can lead you. I told that story to show you that he can lead you in everything. In anything, he can lead you. I can tell you many stories, even up to the place where to even get on the right bus the Holy Spirit can lead you. The first thing that the Holy Spirit can do is to lead you. Okay? So this morning, let's say together, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Lead, me. lead me 
okay? Second thing that he can do is to teach you. John 14, 26 says, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things. Say together, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Teach, me. teach me. There was a young girl, she had done biology. Is that, is that a familiar word? Bio Bio biology, yeah, biology. But she got a job opportunity to do accounts in Maldives. Male or Maldives. So it was a great opportunity for her. So she thought, I will take the job. But she did not know anything about accounts. <laughs> this is a true story. This happened eight months ago. And this girl takes the job, goes to Maldives. And now she's been given project after project, and she didn't know what to do. And she did know some basic stuff, and she's asking everybody how to do this, and she's kind of doing this, and she's messing things up, and her boss came and kind of yelled at her and screaming at her and trying to get things on time. How many of you have been in that place? Oh, you have been pressed to get, and you don't know what you're doing, but you're trying to survive. <laughs> when we were first parents, we didn't know what we were doing. <laughs> but now, when the second baby comes, we know what to do. <laughs> At least, you know, you learn. But this girl did not know what to do. And this girl said, on the fifth day, she went to her room and said, Holy Spirit, two options. One, Either you give me money to leave because they are not going to pray for the return flight. She has to pray, pay for her return flight to Sri Lanka. You got to give me money to leave or you got to teach me how to do my job. Next day morning, she's going and she's thinking now the Holy Spirit is really going to help her and all of that. And as soon as she sits on the chair, her boss comes and says, you got to get this report done in five hours. And that report normally takes at least eight to ten hours. And she doesn't know what she's doing. So she sits there and says, Holy Spirit, teach me. This is a true story. And the Holy Spirit began to teach her how to do the double entry system. Okay? What was supposed to be done in five hours? She finished in four hours. She's still in Maldives. She's got promoted. She did biology. Sometimes we think like, oh, Holy Spirit, what can you teach? The Holy Spirit needs to teach you to be a better father. Holy Spirit needs to teach you to be a better mother. Holy Spirit needs to teach you how to parent, how to work, whatever area that the Holy Spirit you ask help for, he will help you. See, the Holy Spirit does not, uh, what do you call it? Um, he doesn't come and push. The enemy, the, the devil drives you, but the Holy Spirit leads you. Another version, I think the Amplified or the Message version says, this scripture, that he takes you by the hand. He takes you by the hand. He leads you. He doesn't force you. Which means, if you really need his help in leading, in getting something, you need some help in teaching, you need to ask him. Okay? And every morning when we get up, when we pray, this is something since about three or four months ago we started doing, is that we say, Holy Spirit, you are our helper. Help me to be a better husband. Yeah. Kayla says, help me to be a better wife. I say, help us to be better parents. Help us to be better sons and daughter. Help us to be a better leader. And when we ask, you will receive. receive. Whatever you ask, you will receive. So you can ask the Holy Spirit to teach you. There are areas that we don't know. <laughs> Nobody's all knowing. Only God is all knowing. We need areas that we need Him to come through. And the Holy Spirit is that helper. Let's pray together and say, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Teach, me. teach me. 
Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit I, am open I am open for your teaching, for your teaching. in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Third thing, first thing is that he wants to lead you, he can lead you, he can teach you. Final thing is he can anoint you. Everybody say anoint. anoint. Okay. Now when you do not have the anointing, you can be annoying. And this morning, I hope I am not annoying. I hope I have the anointing. Okay? And many people who are not having the anointing gets annoying. How many of you have been around annoying people? Oh, don't wave your hand. <laughs> okay? There's been, okay, anointing. I, I say that the, we need the anointing. And many a times, we see that Christians do not have the anointing of God. Before, in the New Testament, you see that the New Testament church was a church with power. Yeah. I got the power. <laughs> I think that's how Peter sang that. <laughs> I got the power. And then he came and preached. First, he didn't have the power. He was hiding. I mean, he was hiding. But on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came on him, he said, I got the power. <laughs> and he suddenly, with that power, he preached and 3,000 people got saved. When you receive the, the help of the helper, you receive an anointing to do things that you cannot otherwise do. Right. Hallelujah. And the anointing breaks the yoke. Whatever things that are there in your life, you need the help of this anointing to break things that are holding you back from the things of God. The New Testament church was a church of fire. I mean, every time you read, you see that every time they gather together, healing was taking place. Salvation was taking place. Deliverance was taking place. Curses were breaking. Things were happening and that's how church should be. Every time we come together, something needs to happen. I tell people that when we come together, if something is not happening, it's a waste of time. And I don't want to waste time. Nobody wants to waste time. When we come together, something needs to happen. You are here this morning, something needs to happen. Because if I'm not annoying, there's an anointing here. And that anointing needs to do something in your life. Luke 4.18 says, Luke 4.18, he anoints you. Anointing is the supernatural power. God's supernatural power working in you and through you. That is my definition of the anointing. God's supernatural power working in you and through you. Luke chapter 4 verse 18. Luke 4, 18, says, The Spirit of the Lord is on me. Yeah, because he has anointed me. Everybody say anointed. anointed. Now, my Bible, I think I purchased, purchased it from America. I don't know. But does your Bible say the Spirit of the Lord is on me? Because he has anointed Pastor Steve. <laughs> he has anointed Apostle Reverend. Same. <laughs> he has anointed Mitchell to preach the good news. Does he say that? No. He has anointed? Me. 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 me, 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 me. I mean, you can look at yourself and say, me. Wow. He has anointed you. He has anointed you. And what has he anointed you to do? Let's talk about it. What has he anointed you to do? He has anointed you to preach the good news. Share the gospel. Hallelujah. Amen. Share the gospel. By 2020, only 5% of Americans uh, between the ages of 18 to 30 will be attending church. Do you know that? Only 5% of the people aged 18 to 30 will be attending church. America took the gospel all around the world. I believe that there are people that are really needing 
the good news. Right here. In this town. In this nation. There is somebody who needs the good news. Sri Lanka has 80% Buddhists. But America took the word of God to all of these nations. America actually had a hand in turning Korea around. 50 years ago, South Korea was a third world nation. Actually, 60 years ago. Today, they are the 12th richest nation in the world. And 46% Christians. Christianity is not a gospel of poverty. Because he took everything on that cross. It is a gospel of power. Power to change nations. It can change lives, but it can change cities. Then it can change a nation. They were a third world nation. Today, they are the 12th richest nation. The anointing. To preach the good news, change the nation. Today, I want to challenge you. You have an anointing. How many of you have shared the gospel with somebody? How many of you make a conscious decision to share the gospel? Let me just tell this story to you because you understand harvest. Jesus said, the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. Now, just imagine you are in a harvest season. And you are just like, ah, oh, harvest is there. Wow. See the cornfields. Beautiful. Beautiful. And you are just wondering and watching about it. Are you going to get anything out of the cornfield? No. What will make you bring the harvest? If you only get in, you got to get into the Oh, you, you got to get into that, get into the field. I mean, I, okay, Sri Lankans understand. I mean, here they don't get into the field. I saw a massive giant. I asked, what is that truck, man? I, I have never seen something like that, Sam. And Sam said, that is the harvest or whatever. I mean, that is so huge. I have never seen something like that in my whole life. In Sri Lanka, we get into the field. We got to get muddy. We got to get yucky. Uh, but over here, I mean, you just drive the thing and I... <laughs> So it does not matter whether you get in the field or whether you drive the truck. I want to tell you that Jesus said the harvest is in Ashby, the harvest is in this state, the harvest is plentiful. Who are the laborers? Ah... We, everybody say we. <laughs> so laborers have to got, they, they got to do something. Either to get in the truck or I don't know, get in the field. You got to do something so that you can bring the harvest. Jesus said he has anointed you. And in Sri Lanka, sometimes you are afraid to share the gospel. And many people say I'm in fear because if they reject it, I will tell you the world is in desperate need. In desperate need. I have seen people when we share the gospel, they look like all tough and stuff, but then they start crying and pouring because they need good news. They are hearing bad news every day, all day. When you switch on the news, are you hearing any good news? No. These days, news, man, is all bad news. Yeah. It was just great to hear all of these testimonies and stuff that God is doing yeah. because the kingdom of God is about good news. But the kingdom that the enemy is trying to put in this world, it's all bad news. Somebody kills somebody, Iran is firing, or I don't know what, ISIS is rising up, and oh my God. <laughs> and people are all in fear and screaming, and guess what? God has more power than anything in the world. But the church has got to rise up with that power and be the church. Ecclesia means, ecclesia, the word Paul used, is a governing force. Yes, which means that you are not governed by the things that are around you. There is a higher force in you, Holy Spirit, that can change things for you. Hallelujah. He has anointed you to preach. Second thing is he has anointed you to heal. 
it says that he has anointed you to preach the good news. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, recovery of sight to the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord. Like I told you a little while ago, 300 healings in 24 hours. All of those young people who prayed are below 23 years old. They are just going to school. And uh, one meeting that we were praying, 25 demons manifested at the same time. And one, one girl was like, Pastor, help me. I said, Holy Spirit has got to help you. <laughs> He's like, Pastor, come and help me. I said, no, Holy Spirit has got to help you. She started praying in the spirit. And the demonic spirit left. The helper is the Holy Spirit, not the pastor. Nobody, no, nobody with the title can help you. There is only one title that can help you. It is the Holy Spirit, Jesus. Amen. And I'm talking about the Spirit of the Holy Spirit that can help you. And He's got the power to heal. Do you know that you can pray and people can be healed? I'll, I'll let me tell you this story. I got like another three or four minutes. Um, there was this girl. We were making these healing calls. We make some healing calls. I was doing a a small uh, he training for uh, to how to pray for healing and uh, doing healing ministry. And there's this girl who came and said, my friend fell from her steps, the steps at the house, and she broke her ankle. Can we pray for her? I said, we sure can. But she is a Buddhist. I said, it's okay. It's okay. The power of God reaches out to the Buddhists. Yeah. It can reach out to everybody. So they take the phone, and they start praying. They start praying and this girl starts praying and another, another lady, they start praying and declaring the healing and then suddenly they ask, how are you feeling? I am healed. That girl says, the Buddhist girl says, I am healed. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, I don't hear anywhere anybody else can do what I'm talking about right here. Only Jesus can, and you should say, like, hallelujah. Amen. Woo, amen. <laughs> Something, yeah? I mean, I, I mean, this girl had a broken ankle. Doctor said three months. But Jesus said, right now. Yeah. I'm here to tell you that you got an anointing. It does not matter what the doctor has to say. It does not want to have to do what the medical report has to say. Now, please don't go and do like, ah, no medication anymore. No, I'm not saying that. But I am here to tell you that Jesus heals still. Yes. His power is real still. Yes. 6,000 years ago, God said, let there be light. Let everything be created. Okay? Yes. Stars were created, right? After 6,000 years... After 6,000 years, can you see like a thread that is holding the stars? Do you, do you, see, like, you, do you see a thread that is holding the world? And, yeah. No. His word that had power 6,000 years ago is still holding the world. Yeah. If he's holding the world, he can hold your world. Yeah. That's right. Good morning. <laughs> what am I trying to tell you? That he's got the power to heal you. And he's got the power to heal through you. That's the anointing. Yes. Yes. You got to pray. You can pray. And, and somebody came and said, I don't know how to pray. It is okay. There was a lady in the same meeting we were praying for. Her both legs were broken. Both legs. She cannot walk. So they went to the door and said, oh, can you open the door? She said, I am sitting now. I cannot stand. If I come to the door, nobody is there to help me. So I cannot stand. They said, it's okay. Let, let us pray over the phone. So they prayed over the phone and said, can you stand up? She said, no, 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 I can't stand up. I don't know. You know, I will fall and nobody's here. But after a few hours, somebody came. I mean, I think her, her daughter came and she checked. Both of her legs were healed instantly. Amen. She was walking. And she's this Anglican lady and from an Anglican background. She went to the women's aglo. Are you familiar with women's aglo? Women's aglo, she's, she's on the board of Sri Lanka. And she goes to the board meeting and she says, I got a testimony. I got to tell you. 
I got a testimony. I got to tell you something. My both my legs were broken. I couldn't even stand. But they prayed for me over the phone. And I got healed and I can walk now. Amen. That is a God that we serve. I'll tell you, that God that is in that teeny beeny island of Sri Lanka paradise <laughs> is the same God, I believe, that is there in Ashby, Minnesota. He can heal you. And he, can, he has the power to heal through you. Take the risk. Pray for somebody. Some people say, no, no, you don't have to. Church is out there the rest of the days, six days of the week. You can pray for somebody during the week. When somebody says they are sick, oh, I know a good doctor. Some people say, oh, I know a good doctor. I went here for medication. That's how people say. I will tell you, you got to say, man, I got a doctor on call. One moment. In the name of Jesus, I say you will be healed. Amen. You got to try that out because it actually happens. Last one, he can, he can anoint you to give the gospel. He can anoint you to heal and deliver, break demonic bondages over your life. And he's got the anointing to bless you. He can break, break generational curses of your life. Do you know that? My... my, uh, my uh, Uncle has been drinking alcohol since he was 16 years old. Now he's about 52 or something like that. So you, you do the math. I'm not very good at that, but that's a long time he's been drinking. So at my grandmother's 92nd birthday, came together. And oh, the whole family came together because we thought that was her last birthday, and actually it was. And now here, he's stone cold drunk. He's like... <laughs> You know when people drink, right? Like, yeah. yes. They think they are standing and they're like. <laughs> so he's like going like that. And my uncle and me, we grabbed his hand together and we prayed because my grandfather was an alcoholic since he was 16 years old. My great-grandfather was an alcoholic until the day they died. So it was a generational thing. We prayed in the name of Jesus. And he was like so, so drunk and his breath was stinking. But we prayed in the name of Jesus for all that 30 plus years. Every day, he's been having a shot of alcohol. Guess what? The next day, he tried to drink. He said when he put that alcohol in his mouth, it was like burning his whole body. <laughs> next day, he was delivered. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, this morning I'm here to tell you, church, you got the power. Amen. Somebody sang that song saying, I got the power, but I'm here to tell you, you got the power. Amen. You got the power. You got the power of the Holy Ghost. You got the power of the Holy Spirit to change the world, Amen. to heal the sick, Amen. to deliver the oppressed, to release blessing over your life. But you got to ask the helper to help you. Yes. And this morning, and this morning, I'm here to tell you that he, he is here to help you. Yes, right. And he can help you. Yes. You got to ask the help of the Holy Spirit. It'll change your life. Yes. 